there's the people, process, and technology answer, right? People, process, and technology that improve knowledge flow within the organization. Then there's sort of a more intellectual capital take that people sometimes use is literally like, you are worth an amount equal to the ideas in your head, basically. And you can also think about outside of humans, like what is, you know, what's stored on the, the hard drive and the computer next to you and what's represented in the way the organization actually works and how the processes work. Because if one process works better than another, then maybe that process is worth more from sort of a knowledge value perspective than the next one. So the short story, there's all these sort of fancy ways of trying to figure it out. For me, I think I look at it in two big ways, actually. One is in relationships. And this has sort of multiple bits under it. One is I'm, I'm a big kind of community management, community practice person at the moment. Um, and it ties into the idea that knowledge is a very social thing. So what I know also depends on sort of who I am speaking to about it. Like if I read something and then I also go and have a conversation, my comprehension of that thing is different from when I just was reading it just as a very like basic example. Um, so the act of talking about things is really important to me. And then, so beyond that, that, that relationship idea, also communications, which I think uh, a lot of knowledge management people kind of, I don't know, struggle with, but like it happens, they might not anticipate that somehow communications becomes a large part of their job. Uh, and that's definitely been the case for myself, both in terms of like social media, and emails and sort of facilitation on online platforms, but also a lot of just the internal communications within an organization uh, that, that really help to connect, you know, the people who need to know something with the people who do know something in those kinds of situations. Through Microsoft Word, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, and seriously, so I was working for a couple of years um, with Jon Snow uh, Research and Training Inc. And they have a, a, an office base just across the river in, in Roslyn. Um, and I was working on a project called Spring. Uh, still have some super good friends over there. Uh, and just give a shout out to John Nicholson, who was really my like first KM mentor uh, when I was working under him. But there was a period where I was working specifically on a lot of Feed the Future program review. Uh, and we sort of wrapped up that chunk of work and then it was a question of, well, for the team who'd been working on that, like what other things can we do for spring? Uh, and it, it was really kind of funny because my colleague, Alyssa Klein, was like, Aaron, you're really good with Microsoft Word and every time you like do all the formatting and you know how to like fix things, and I think you'd be really good at KM. Like that was her <laughs> connection. With, but we ran with it. Um, there was space for it on the, the spring team, and I was genuinely interested in it, in part, uh, and this sort of goes back to your first question, but in part because for a long time I've been interested in like the, the research to application kind of pathway, and I think KM represents a pretty strong um, you know, skill set or approach to, to making that happen. like my entire project, like you're just saying, is a knowledge management one, I think, fundamentally. Because it's about providing access to certain types of knowledge and information, it's about spreading that knowledge and information, and it's about providing opportunities for learning. And we're talking about both cross-platform, so um, website, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and we're talking about cross, let's call it domain, but like nutrition agriculture, social protection, food security, health. So you have this really cool kind of matrix blending of both different technical topics and different ways of spreading, sharing, learning, you know, and, and growing kind of the, the knowledge around it. Um, so my day to day is really, it, it's grown from sort of taking care of the, the website and the social media chunks, especially in a bit of the community management to really managing the whole platform at this time, which is exciting for me in terms of, you know, professional growth. So it was definitely through spring. I, if, if my dim memory serves, I think at some point, John Nicholson probably put me in touch with Patrick Coonan, um, who was working here at the time. 
Um, and you know, I, you know, we hit it off personally, and also obviously there was a, a tight connection professionally. Um, and so through him specifically, I think I started getting more introduced to what TOFs and what the FSN network were doing. Uh, and then eventually made the connection with Sheila, right as she was kind of, um, I remember her using these words, rebooting, I think, the, the KM task force. Um, and, you know, there's just, again, a lot of overlap there, so why not kind of pitch in and get involved? Um, and I'm really, you know, I, I've appreciated over time seeing it, so I, I would say over the past, you know, like two or three years, really, seeing it go to, in two ways. One is kind of the in-person seminar events and like trying to suss out KM issues that relate to, you know, ag nutrition, food security space, and also working with, like there was one crossover with the, the M&E working group, which is a nice way to, to bring things together. And then the other is through the sort of rubber stamping of certain tools uh, that we see as helpful in the KM space. And especially they seem to focus a lot on like the community management or community practice building and also on um, facilitation, which I think are two huge skills that are very, and facilitation especially, is a very hard skill to really to really get. I think some people naturally are inclined to like do it well, but there are a lot, there, there's so much that can go into it and that can make a discussion go from like pretty good and interesting to great and kind of transformative. Um, and I think that's what I see it as. I'm actually just going to give one because I like it so much, and that is the Art of Knowledge Exchange, which was originally created by uh, a group within the bank, and they made it in a really smart way. I mean, you know, just indexes and chapters and whatnot, but it's broken down into like, so you're thinking about doing an X, like generally, you know, it's, it's, it's a seminar or a strategy or whatever it is, and it's just it just walks you through these processes beautifully well and then includes also at the end a pretty comprehensive toolkit um, that kind of goes back to the facilitation edge but more around like knowledge sharing. One that is sort of being applied more and more right now are things like text analytics. Um, so I think in, in our sphere, we produce a lot of case studies, reports, lessons learned, m and &E evaluations, impact, etc. And I think uh, there is some examples of this at the bank, but really I think, you know, we're sort of slowly catching up to what might already be happening elsewhere. But just the idea that essentially you can create a system where you feed in all of these different sources of rich lessons learned material that are applicable to projects and programming and you know, in very simplistic terms, spit out a condensed package of, so you're working in Rwanda on a dairy chain, uh, you know, a dairy cold chain project that involves agricultural cooperatives. Okay, we scanned a hundred documents and we picked out like these, whatever, you know, two chapters across all of them that are gonna be the most relevant for you, um, you know, and maybe another value add is that it, that it then, you know, generates a, a well-structured report that's easily readable and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's a, <clears throat> that's both a now and a future of KM in our space specifically. Um, I think the, the machine learning more broadly, so text analytics is kind of a, a, a subset, like it falls under the umbrella of machine learning, so I think Machine learning as a broader thing is just going to drive a ton of different changes and you're going to see that, you know, in, in enterprise softwares and enterprise social network softwares and who's connected to who and things like expert finders um, are, a, you know, kind of a, a, I don't know, big thing, but a big-ish thing. There's a bunch of companies that do that but basically say, okay, you have an enterprise of 200 or 20,000 people, are you able, are individuals within that network able to suss out who they should be talking to based on what they need? And if you give us certain data, like, you know, their skill profiles inside the, the, the organizational network, their LinkedIn profile, their whatever, you know, I bet we can make it super clear who should be talking to whom, again, based on what needs to be done. So then you take that whole text analytics things and there's reports on, you know, what does a person need to know working in Rwanda on a dairy chain? And then next to it, you also put, you should talk to person X, Y, and Z because they've worked on a similar thing either in Rwanda, you know, or in the Philippines or in South Africa. And so then you get this, this, you know, 
amazing pinpointed resource of both what's happened and the people who've done it right there for you. 